we're going to let the laundry go slightly more. And then we'll turn off the laundry noise. Let me make sure I checked in everything that I worked on on the plane as well. Let's check that out. While I was traveling, I got some new honey for the tea scenarios. Orange cinnamon honey. We might use a little bit of this tonight. We'll see. We'll see. How's it going, people? What is up? What, how are things? Okay, the laptop is checked in. So once the tea water is done, we'll shut off the laundry and then there won't be noises. Noises. Okay. How, how are things on the setup? I think they're okay. This is working. Okay. What? What can we deliver to the people? Mm. That email is probably something I need to read carefully and reply to. That's something I don't want to do yet. All right, let me check this one. I don't, I haven't looked at this one. I don't know what will come up. Let's see what happens. Undeclared identifier C. Uh, okay. D uh, this, oh, this is an incomplete example. I guess I could do like, why do people do that? Okay, type wanted a function, type given as 64. What? Type mismatch, it wanted a procedure that maps a polymorphic variable to nothing. Oh, one of these. 
given as 64. Oh, these must be, all right, okay. Oh, the, we don't. So that would be what this actually is. If I type correctly. All right, my tea water is done. Let's go see what's up. Actually, my clothes are maybe even dry. Okay, at the end of compilation, this procedure is still polymorphic because the static type, all polymorphism must be resolved. When, hmm. Okay, yeah, we're gonna have to look at this. This is, possibly a problem. So filter many dot VA. So in theory, filter many should we could say. What's that going to say? Oh, yeah. We don't even get to that point. Uh, let's comment this out for a minute. Attempt to use a polymorphic type in runtime code. Okay. Well, lol. Why does it think that's polymorphic? Procedure S64. Oh, so the element type, the element type is correctly non polymorphic, but that doesn't carry up to the var arcs. So this could be a relatively simple bug. It's not like we're failing to solve for the T because it's like nested in there. It's like we know we know what that is. It's just VEA itself is not, which is weird. So um, okay. Let's uh, let's start debugging this. Let's start debugging this. Noises are fine, they're barely audible. Well, let me see anyway. <clears throat> I mean, you know how much the streaming audience just will complain about any slight noise that ever occurs. I think my clothes just dried really fast, so I'm just gonna kind of put them away while, while we do the thing. So what I feel like here is, I don't know. So, so when we're looking at this type, I, 
I don't know if there's like a special thing. I mean, I wrote this code, right? But I don't remember if there's a special thing at the end of the polymorph process to like patch up the type of the var args, right? Because um, there probably is, right? Because you want to make it an array of that particular type. Um, and so it might be that we just save the element type at the beginning and poke it at the end, and that is oblivious to whether that element type has been solved for. It is possible that that's what's happening. I'm not sure. test the T. Kind of wish I was still in Austin, not going to lie, but I have stuff to do here in San Francisco for a couple days. Let's put some of the honey in there. Where'd I put it? Orange cinnamon honey. Thinking about moving to Austin. Um, not very seriously, but it is on the table. It is on the table. I had a good time there for the past week. And I could imagine continuing to have a good time there. So, you know, we'll see. And I could imagine continuing to have a bummer time in San Francisco now the In-N-Out Burger is closed. Mmm, that tastes good. Just pack and go. What's the worst thing that can happen? In and out is closed in San Francisco. I am sure if you do a web search, you will find out very quickly why In and Out is closed in San Francisco. I fully support that. I am team In and Out. I mean, I don't actually like In and Out hamburgers very much, but um, I, I support their actions in this matter. Wow, this honey is really good.
It's really good. Temp closed? No, I mean, why do you think it's... So they said temporarily closed, but I don't understand the conditions under which it can ever open. The only conditions under which it can ever open are A, San Francisco ends the vaccine mandate, which they've shown no sign of doing. B, in and out caves on their position, which I doubt they will do. Or C, San Francisco's vaccine mandate is ruled illegal by a higher court, which also seems very unlikely. So it's closed. There's no more in and out in San Francisco. Oh, indoor dining is unavailable. Okay, interesting. I didn't know that fact. So yeah, probably you'll never be able to eat inside. Um, I will go there tomorrow because uh, I, I was going to go to a doctor's appointment um, at 1030 a.m. And the best thing you can do after going to the, the doctor is eat a burger and fries. Um, so I will drop by to show my support and have an outdoor hamburger. Which may be a mistake because I bet you there's going to be a long ass line tomorrow. Oh my God, there's going to be a long ass line. But um, what is my in and out burger style? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, everybody likes the double double animal style, but I never actually ordered that. I probably would like it. I usually am boring and get like a double cheeseburger off the menu or whatever. So let me just see what happens. Make array literal from constant make varargs. I feel like this is actually what gets invoked. I feel like it's this line right here that breaks it. Or no, maybe not. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We're going to have to. OK, we'll see. Let's even see if we get here. What is it doing? It's Visual Studio taking forever to start up again. It does this sometimes when you haven't run anything in a while. Because, you know, it's, it's, oh, now it's locking up. All right, whatever. I, I have had it with this thing. All right. Um, Okay, let's just, um, let's make sure we're at the right place. Okay, line five, which should be uh, here. Yes. 
So a make var arg struct, which is what we're looking at, is um, it's a syntax tree node that says take these and make an array out of it that we could put there, right? So let's just skip to the end and see what we end up with. So result array type. is what? Um, it's polymorphic. The element type is, uh, I think, not... Oh, it is... It is also polymorphic. So, okay. I got it a little bit wrong. Um, the deal is... When I did the subscript, it was actually able to pick the type of the subscript expression because that was there as a constant because, you know, um, and therefore it didn't need to look at this type for the element, but this type, is, so I thought that the element type was right and just the overall array was wrong somehow. It, that's not what's going on. Both the element type in this type and the overall array type are marked polymorphic, um, which makes more sense. Uh, it's not what we want, but it, it makes more sense. Yeah, so E type is polymorphic. Um, and that is on the make var args. So we have to figure out where that comes from. And it's probably just the input. Um, yeah, we probably need to get the type from the struct, like the target type, the actual one, and pass it in. Or reevaluate the make var args. Um, so yeah, we have this uh, arg decal will tell us what type we actually need, and it had better not be polymorphic, right? It is. What? What? Okay. In and out is just weird to me because the little hamburger patties are so thin. I feel like I'm not, I, I feel like it's an extremely like cost cut hamburger. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I don't like their fries very much. Just the style. The style of them is not delicious. Compared to McDonald's or Burger King. Yeah, but like if I can go, if I can go to In-N-Out or Chick-fil-A, I'm going to Chick-fil-A.
which, by the way, there are no Chick-fil-A's in the city of San Francisco. Otherwise, they would have done the same thing. Like sandwiches. Well, you know, you know, if you're going to go have sandwiches. Okay, it bothers me a little bit. Why is this declaration still polymorphic? Because I thought maybe I'm confused. But like at the end of this, I thought we should know No, I guess not. Okay. So we do solve for matches. Yeah, no, I mean, here we seem to be assuming Oh. Okay. Yes. So we have not and by we, I mean me, who wrote this code, have not properly considered what needs to happen when there's a var args that's constant, that uses polymorph variables. We need to copy and force infer the Okay. We need to I might be a little too tired to solve this tonight after flying back from Austin because we need to do something that could potentially yield. We need to copy and infer the hmm. the type of the uh, Varg's array which I was thinking right now, oh, I need to add that as an exceptional extra step that happens here. And then we need to wait on that and all this stuff. Um, Wait, what's arg type? Let me just triple quadruple check that we don't have this. Arg type is not polymorphic. Wait, what? I'm glad I checked. Array element type. That is polymorphic. Fuck. Okay, 
Never mind. Okay. Now, normally, the process of solving a polymorph like this involves doing copy and force infers on the things. Um, so doing an extra one after that process is finished down here when we go to try to map Verargs, I'm thinking like, well, maybe, maybe I can have, make it happen during that process. So now I want to go look at the solver and see if that could happen. Chipotle works too. I don't know. So the equivalent at Chipotle of the French fries is the um, the lime, the salty lime chips, which are super good when they make them well, but sometimes they don't make them well and they're just trash, right? So like, I mean, I haven't had those in a couple years just because last time I tried to get them, they were so disappointing and then COVID, but um, dude, those salty lime tortilla chips are the best. started taking a compiler's course. You would have been indoctrinated to worshiping abstractions, OP scripting languages and all that. What is an efficient way to parallelize the process before the optimizer kicks in? And he started explaining threads. No, but that's the right explanation. Why do you think threads is wrong? That's what I would say if you asked me that question. How are you going to parallelize something without threads? Oh, he thought you didn't know about thread. I see. So you were asking, like, what can you actually do to solve the the problem? And he was like, oh, just use threads, which isn't okay. It's true that that isn't an answer because it's like use threads to do what, right? Um, yeah. Okay, I get. I get what you're saying then. Yeah, I mean, that is often see. I mean, again, I wasn't there in, in the room for this conversation you're having, but that's kind of the definition of Dunning-Kruger syndrome, right? Is when somebody doesn't know enough about something to say like, oh yeah, you use threads, man, right? And it's like, well, okay. That's step one out of like 3,000 is to decide to use threads. It's possible to go through an entire CS course. Absolutely, it's possible to go through an entire course, but it's probably not possible to get your degree without knowing about threads. Unless you're at a really, really bad school. But like, I probably wouldn't talk about threads if I did an intro to computer course, probably. Yeah, I'm feeling a little tired. Like plane plane trips make me tired. Um So I might ship the value to the people without attempting a fix for this yet and just leave it for later. Um 
I don't know. It's only 9.30, though, San Francisco time. But it's almost midnight Austin time, and that's like the time zone that I'm on. <laughs> we'll, we'll look at it a little bit more. But, um, oh, yeah, I was going to go look at the solver. Problem is there's two solvers, which is why it starts to get annoying, right? Okay. So we go here, and... Type wanted, type given. Why is my air conditioning not coming on? So this one just goes through all the arguments in order does matching on them. Easy peasy. Oh yeah, you know, we don't actually we don't actually Reinfer anything there because we know that this case is simple enough that we don't need it. It's this one. It's this gnarly bro um, that does it. So we copy any procedures we're going to need. We We have this looping need in first to continue polymorph matching. So I'm pretty sure this can yield, right? Yes, we can yield from here. Um, so we could at the end have a pass actually I I think this is not even the looping solver let's um, let's look at the the progress variable because this should be recorded on there I think it's the non looping solver um, non-looping, yeah. So really, we could put a step We could handle it in handling polymorphic default values. I think. You know, okay, I'm tired, but I'm gonna start trying to put handling in here because I don't wanna make another state. So we could make a comment like also, also what if it's, polymorphic var args, then we could handle that in here, right? Um, so why, why do we declare these up here? This var args element type. Wait, what? Do we even... We like don't even use these. 
We're, we're about to make some gains. Like what? Like none of this is used. anymore okay see see I was just telling someone last night um, that like even when sorry uh, That even when I write code, often there'll it'll be doing stuff that I just don't notice is not necessary anymore. And then that code lives on and makes complications for other things because other things think they need to pass this varg spec or whatever, and they don't. And that kind of thing, like it's bad enough when you're one programmer, you see it happen. But like in big companies that are growing, this happens all the time because you don't know, you don't know stuff that's obvious to some other person on the team, right? And you don't even know that you don't know those things. And this just happens. Any news on the open beta? No, not yet. I do have news on peppered salami slices. You wrote threaded for loop add in Java in the first semester. I mean, That's not a very practical application of threads, but I guess if the point is to use the threads, then maybe it's fine. You learn they exist. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of wonder how many numbers you have to be adding before it actually makes sense to thread it. And it might not actually be as much as I would have thought initially because on many architectures you actually can get more memory bandwidth by threading because the other core gets some allocation of bandwidth, right? So like you, you might actually be able to speed it up by having two threads or something. If it's, you know, I mean, the problem is you're on a four gigahertz machine, right? So like 4 billion numbers, it, ha it has to be at least that many, right? <laughs> I mean, I guess if it was like just 400 million numbers, that might be enough. I don't know.
All right, well, that's great. I'm happy to make this function shorter. Let's make sure the game runs. day. Now, what do we do here? Fill out the wanted argument types if var args. It doesn't look like we do anything special for var args anymore. Okay, we solve for matches. Okay. So We're using the Cowabunga programming technique. that not work let's see get inferred type expert is nothing wait what wait did I do something bad I think I over deleted code, but then why did the tests pass? Down here, when I said remove some dead code, I feel like there's probably a line. Nope, there really isn't. So like I just broke something. How did I break something by doing that? That doesn't make any sense. Maybe that change that I made
<clears throat> like what? Maybe it only crashes on this. And not any other example. Oh, wait. Why did I delete that? What? What? Why did I delete that? That makes no sense at all. Um, I must have, I must have had a little brain lapse right there. That is absolutely necessary. I'm going to have to go back and watch the VOD and see what, why I deleted that. All right, great. Um, so, we did not, however, get a cowabunga. This, this concerns me. Did I delete the cowabunga? Oh, I commented it out. Okay. Let's try again. Take two. Cowabunga. Take two. We got some. Somehow, much of the time, this gets resolved. I had expected to see only one, but actually, in retrospect, no. I shouldn't have expected to see only one, because I can think of a number of common functions that have polymorphic var args. So it must be that, like, it's actually a function type inside the polymorphic var args is what's messing us up. I don't know. I don't know. All right, you know what? Um, we're going to continue this investigation at a later time. And we're actually just going to deliver value to the people because this one, um, it's again, it's one of those things um, like if you're fresh and you're like ready to go and like you just hammer it out. It could go really fast and be good. But if you're like, you know, kind of sleepy because you're two hours off your time zone and you were on a plane and you try to do it, sometimes those things could be more agonizing. So um, we're just going to deliver the value to the people without finishing this. Um, but I'm going to make a note. Um, here is where we left off investigating args containing a polymorphic procedure. And I, you know, I, I don't think that one will be that hard to solve. Um, a long time ago, something like this would have scared me. I'd have been like, oh my God, I don't know how to handle that robustly inside the polymorphism. But these days, the polymorphism, the, the general system is figured out. And so anything that we need to do or anything we need to like, any case we need to expand it to handle, we just have like a strong enough system there and it'll do it, right? So I'm not really worried about this. Um, it's just, I don't wanna make a mess due to being tired. Um, and I wanna deliver the value to the people. So here's, we're gonna go to 89, built on October 19. And these are the values that we're delivering. Um, normally, I wouldn't quite ship a beta when these are the only values. But the thing is, I know some people were waiting on these C call fixes. And um, where's the... Uh, 
This thing actually was tripping up. Three different people reported this. It's a bug that I introduced in the last beta. So I just want to put this one out to address issues that people are having. Although I think most of them are workaroundable. So I'm going to check this in. I'm going to do the thing where I test it on the Linux machine. Update the version number for the next beta. Okay, great. Refill my brain juice. Yes, I had a pretty action packed day today. I mean, I like hung out with people in another city and then flew back. I don't know. There's something about doing stuff in two cities, right? It, it makes it, it makes it feel like a lot. All right. You Buntu. It's not on the Wi-Fi. What? It's my home Wi-Fi, guys. Just do it. It decided to stop automatically connecting to my home Wi-Fi. What is going on? All right. Make make the binary. Warning implicit conversion of null constant to bool. That looks wrong. Okay, that's fine. We'll we'll fix this. Okay. Checking the version number. Compiling the tests, running the tests in LVM backend mode. They are cranking. There we go. Now I'm compiling them in X64 backend mode. They are cranking. Looks like another successful Linux build. All right. And update Linux binary. All right. GG's. Boom, boom, boom. You didn't realize it was subs only. Your Twitch chat client is missing the functionality of knowing when it has been rejected. Yes, I could not read your messages. Okay, so I think we have the value to deliver to the people. Let's go into high security mode here for a second. And we'll go. Do that. 
go to the upload, upload the pupload, send the email. No, no, don't do that. BCC, BCC, new compiler beta. And then if I go to the change log and I paste the value. And I need to wait for the upload. There we go. I tell them where the upload link is. And we send the value to the people. GG's. And we go, oh, we're up to the 90 now. The next beta is number 90, nine zero. That is literally how many betas that I have sent to the people. That's almost as old as I am. Well, the value, the value is now out in space. I think it's because you stopped doing cardio daily for, yeah, you know, there's somewhere around two weeks. I think it's, I think it's around 12 days or something, right? 11 or 12 days. It probably depends on age, but like, even if you've been really athletic for a while, around day 11 or 12, your body's like, oh, we're not really doing a lot. <laughs> and it like, it just starts to throttle down. 90 value coins. What if we start value coin? And it's like, these are, these are the blockchain entries right here. Okay, see? There are 89 blockchain entries. It totally makes sense. Hello, um, as you can see, we just delivered the value to the people. So that's good. Um, I wanted to get it out, you know, usually, usually we don't quite ship a beta when there's this much stuff, but like I was saying, I know at least one person was waiting on some of these C call fixes and a few people were waiting on this. Um, I don't know. It was just a good idea to send it out. And I think there is already a value coin. Well, I don't know what to say about value coin. <laughs> Isn't a chain a linked list? Well, no, because you don't hear anybody talking about the block linked list, do you? No. No, you don't. All 
All right, so we know what we need to do for next time, which is I need to figure this out. And like I said, I don't think it's that hard. It's just, you know, it's polymorphism. I want to be awake when I do it. Because it's one of the, it's one of the more complex things in the compiler. Although we did just delete like 15 lines of code from it today. So that was good. Well, that was good. All right. So we've got our cowabunga here. It fires. I'm actually... Next time we look at this, I want to step through for one of the cases that works because, you know, of course, sometimes when things don't work, you're like, why don't they work? And you investigate that. But then I had my theory about why it doesn't work, but then I'm not sure why the ones that work, work, right? So there might be some code that's I'm missing right now that actually does handle this for simple cases and just not for the more complex cases. So I will need to look at that. Like, I'm not sure why those other cowabungas actually work. Well, this has been a good stream. We have a lot of people here. I almost want to keep going, but it is bedtime. It's early, but again, I'm on the wrong time zone now. So it would behoove me to go to bed, but we could find somebody to uh, do the raid on. I'm sitting there talking all this shit, shit. I'm on there. Um, <laughs> I gotta go in here more, man, and look at this. This is crazy. Me never again. So yeah. Let's see what's going on. In details, delivering value to the people. M1 Mac Mini setup, day three. Day three? How long does it take to set up a Mac? I mean, I guess it depends on how much you want to do. Gauntlet. Is he making a gauntlet game or is it like... Is his legs in the correct position? They are. Look at him. Okay, well... He's so adorable. Writing a blockchain in OCaml and type system. We're getting down toward the bottom. No, big man 24-7. Okay, we're not really finding anything. We could go to in details here. If y is greater than x it looks like he's doing a small side project. So, uh, what is going on with Twitch? It like f is failing all the time for me. All right, we'll raid Adam, and uh, 
we'll see how that goes. Thank you, everybody, for coming by, and um, we'll be on again at some point later on. Not tonight, <laughs> but, you know, later this week or this weekend, we'll go back and we'll do that polymorphism bug and maybe some other stuff. Thanks, everybody. See you later. Monster. Monster.